Good evening, uh, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. It's uh, good to see you all here, uh, in spite of the rain, uh, the drizzle. I still uh, have the interest to come to listen to the Dharma talk. Uh, tonight we're going to discuss this dana and sila. Dana, probably many of you know, is uh, offering uh, or charity. Uh, uh, Ousi uh, in uh, Cantonese. Uh, and sila is uh, moral conduct. Uh, uh, and this word sila has also come into Bahasa Malaysia. So <clears throat> these two to- these two uh, things, uh, dana and sila, are very basic uh, practice uh, of a uh, lay Buddhist, uh, and it is very important that lay Buddhists uh, uh, understand this dana and sila and practice it. Uh. Uh, all religions, uh, or all uh, good religions, uh, teach us to do good uh, and not to harm others. Uh. And this is what dana and sila is all about. Uh. Dana is doing good, uh, positive good. Uh. Sila is not harming others, uh, uh, refraining from harming others. So these are the two, the positive and the negative aspect uh, of uh, doing good. Uh. And <clears throat> for lay people, uh, these two things uh, are easier to practice. Uh. And uh, besides this, there are higher levels of Dharma practice, uh, which are more advanced uh, and which uh, many lay people cannot do. Uh. But these two things, Dana and Sila, uh, you should do uh, for your own welfare. Um, and why is, why it is, why is it so important, eh? it can be seen in a sutta. Uh, in a sutta, a discourse of the Buddha, the Buddha said, eh, that, um, three things, eh, we get married, eh, in doing three things, la. One is charity, dana. Another one is sila, moral conduct. And the third is bhavana, dana, sila, bhavana. Bhavana means development. And basically it means development of the mind. Uh, that means uh, meditation. And why is it called uh, development of the mind? Because an ordinary mind uh, is uh, obstructed uh, by five things called the five hindrances. Uh, pancha, nivarana. And these five hindrances uh, prevent us from seeing things clearly. Uh, what are these five things? Sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and worry, and doubt. So, when we practice meditation, especially uh, the type of meditation uh, that gives us deep tranquility, uh, uh, then when we attain tranquility or concentration of mind, uh, these five hindrances drop away. Uh, that is why it's called development of the mind, of the mind. Because if a person attains this um, state of calmness, uh, whereby the five hindrances drop off, uh, then the mind is developed. It becomes uh, different from the ordinary mind. And a person with uh, little, uh, with a low level of hindrances, uh, is a person with a high IQ. Uh, uh, you can see things very clearly. But development of the mind, uh, bhavana, is difficult for lay people to practice. Uh, and dana and sila, the other two aspects of getting married, uh, or the other two ways of getting married, uh, are much easier. Uh. That's why uh, 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 it is um, encouraged uh, for lay people. Now in one sutta, the Buddha said, uh, these two things, dana and sila, charity and moral conduct. If you practice it to a very low degree, very little, then it is expected that you, when you pass away, you will come back to get a human rebirth. You will get a human rebirth. But when you are reborn as a human, you won't have much luck. You won't have much blessings. 
Whereas, uh, won't have much blessings means, uh, you're probably born into a low family, a poor family, and then, uh, when you try to earn a living, uh, it's difficult to earn a living. And besides that, uh, you may have, uh, uh, some defects, uh, uh, in your physical appearance, uh, you might be a paraplegic or half blind or something, uh, uh, so that is a person with no blessings. Uh. Or oh, very little blessings. Lah. So this is what happens eh, when a person does very little, observes very little uh, dana and sila. Lah. But at least he gets a, a human rebirth. Lah. A person who does charity and, and keeps the moral conduct eh, or precepts eh, to a medium degree, lah, uh, it's expected that it is expected that he will be reborn as a human being with a lot of blessings, lah, with great blessings. Lah. Uh, you be, might be born into a wealthy family, a good family, and then uh, it's very easy for you to earn your livelihood. Cari makan senang. So the Buddha also said, <clears throat> the third thing is that if you observe these two things, dana and sila, to a high degree, lah, you do a lot of charity and you keep your precepts very well, lah, then the Buddha said uh, that it is expected uh, that you can get a heavenly rebirth uh, where you will enjoy life for a very, very long time. Uh. Uh, so that is why it is good uh, to observe these two things, uh, uh, charity and keeping the precepts or moral conduct. So from this, uh, although the Buddha did not mention, the fourth thing uh, you can conclude uh, from these three things is that if a person does not do these two things, uh, charity and moral conduct, does not observe these two things at all, uh, then uh, that person won't come back as a human being, uh, won't get a human rebirth, won't get a heavenly rebirth. Instead, uh, he'll go down to the three woeful planes of rebirth. Uh, uh, slightly below the human level uh, is the ghost realm. Uh, a lot of uh, human beings, uh, because of insufficient blessings, uh, uh, they are reborn as ghosts. Uh. That's why our Chinese believe uh, seven days after a person passes away, uh, that person will indicate to you that the person has come back to the house. If that person gives any indication that that person has come back to the house, uh, usually it means that that person is reborn as a ghost. Then only he can come back. Uh. Uh, then the other, uh, the second type of uh, woeful plane uh, rebirth uh, is the animal realm. Uh, animal realm is worse than the ghost realm uh, because in the animal realm uh, they devour each other, eat each other alive. Uh. Uh, <clears throat> so there's a second type of uh, woeful rebirth. The, the, the third and the worst uh, is the hell realm rebirth. Uh. Uh, Hell realm rebirth, where a person does a lot of evil eh, and is reborn in the uh, hell realm eh, to suffer a lot, eh, both physically as well as mentally. Eh. Uh, now, of these two things, eh, charity and moral conduct, you could say eh, that actually sila, moral conduct, is more important eh, because if a person does not uh, observe the uh, moral conduct, eh, uh, that person will be liable to kill, eh, for example, go hunting, and to steal or cheat people, to commit adultery, uh, to lie, etc. Eh. Uh, so, uh, if that person does not have this moral conduct at all, eh, that it is expected that that person would be be born, for example, in the animal realm or even in hell. Whereas if a person does not do sila, uh, sorry, dana, charity, that means that person is short of blessings. And a person short of blessings uh, is generally reborn as a ghost. Uh, uh, a ghost realm is slightly worse than the human realm. Uh. So, in the observance of sila, the moral conduct, the Buddha taught that five basic precepts are very important. Every person has got to observe these five precepts for his or her own good, regardless of whether that person is a Buddhist 
or a Christian, or a Muslim, or a Hindu, etc., or even a non-believer, a free thinker, still has to observe these five precepts. These five precepts in Pali is called Panchasila. Uh, and Panchasila in Buddhism is so famous uh, that in, uh, in Indonesia, uh, during President Sukarno's time, he also decided that they also must observe Panchasila. But Indonesian Panchasila is was slightly changed. Lah. These uh, five precepts, uh, uh, the first one is not to kill, lah, not to purposely kill any, take the life of any living being uh, intentionally. Lah. Uh, and that is put as the first precept. And the second precept is not to take what is not given to you. Uh, not to take what is not given to you uh, is slightly more strict uh, than stealing. Uh. Uh, stealing is, uh, uh, you know that uh, you should not take it and yet you take it. But uh, taking not is what is not given to you uh, is, for example, like somebody lost something, dropped something on the floor. And then uh, it's, it's, it's not given to you, but yet you pocket it. Uh, uh, because later that person may come back to look look for this object. Eh? So, it does not belong to you, you should not take it. The third one is not to commit adultery. And the fourth one is not to lie. The fifth is not to take intoxicants, eh? drugs or uh, liquor. Eh? Because uh, when you take intoxicants eh, to the extent that you are intoxicated, eh, then you lose control of yourself. Eh? What you should not do, you do. Eh? What you should not say, you say. Uh, and what you should do, you don't do. What you should say, you don't say. Uh, so you, you have no control of yourself. Uh. Now these five precepts are so important uh, that even in the laws of a country, uh, if you break, uh, especially the first four precepts, uh, you could get into serious trouble. Uh. For example, if you kill another human being, uh, you might you will probably get a life, a life sentence uh, or death penalty. Uh. Uh, if you kill another human being. Uh, the second one, if you uh, steal or you cheat somebody, uh, or you steal somebody's property, uh, uh, you can also get into the uh, trouble with the law. Third one, if you seduce somebody's wife uh, or commit adultery, you also can get into big trouble in the law. The fourth one, if you lie uh, and cheat people, also you could get into big trouble uh, uh, with the law. Uh, so, of these five precepts, uh, why is killing put as the number one precept? Uh, because actually it's the most important. Because uh, every living being, uh, uh, there is nothing more valuable to us uh, than our life. Uh, if, if, you, if somebody borrowed, uh, say, a uh, million dollars from you, uh, or even uh, if they took away, cheated you of all your property, uh, when you are about to die, eh, you might still forgive them. Eh. Why? Because you know eh, that when we die, we cannot even take a single cent with us. Yes or not? Uh, there's nothing in this world eh, we can take along with us when we die. Eh. So everything in this world, eh, nothing in this world actually belongs to us. Uh, it is because of our good karma, of our blessings, eh, that we get to use certain things eh, temporarily. Eh. We get to use certain things. And then uh, when life is ended, uh, we have to give up everything and go empty-handed. Uh. So because of that, uh, uh, if somebody took uh, a lot of our property away uh, or stole our, our money, etc., uh, we still can forgive. Uh. But generally, if somebody took your life, uh, you would feel like taking revenge uh, when you are about to die. Uh, because uh, there is nothing more important than 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 your life. Uh. Then uh, the result of uh, this uh, breaking this precept, uh, the killing precept. Uh, if you con uh, often break this precept, for example, a person likes to go hunting, uh, shoot wild boar, and shoot uh, all kinds of animals. Uh, then because of making uh, the other beings' life short, uh, the result of karma vipaka uh, is that you will have short life uh, in your future rebirth. Uh, or possibly sometimes even this this life itself, uh, uh, you may have short life. Uh. 
because we know uh, there are some hunters, uh, they go shooting wild boar, uh, and then one day uh, they get shot by their friends uh, because their friends saw them as a wild boar. Uh, so they get shot. So you can see uh, the, the karma ripen in this very life itself. Uh. The second precept is not to take what is not given to you. Uh. If we break this precept often, uh, then uh, the result is that uh, people will also steal from us. Uh. There are some people, they have a factory or they employ workers uh, in their company or what. And then uh, you find that the workers like to steal steal the things from the boss. Uh. So that is the result of uh, stealing Kamal. Uh. Uh, and then uh, the third precept uh, is not to commit adultery. Uh, if a person commits adultery, uh, then he breaks up uh, another person's family and then he causes others to hate him. And then uh, the other uh, result of adultery uh, is that uh, you might be reborn as an animal uh, because animals uh, uh, have very strong sensual desire. And then when you are born as an animal, uh, you might be castrated many lifetimes. Uh. Uh, there was a story in the Theri Gata uh, Arahan Nan uh, when she attained Arahanhood, she saw her previous life uh, she, and then she recalled uh, that she was a man before and committed adultery and uh, uh, as a result uh, uh, she was reborn as an animal many times and was castrated many times uh. And then when she was born as a, a human being also, uh, 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 a lot of people didn't like her. Uh. So that is a result of uh, uh, breaking the adultery precept. Then the fourth precept is not to lie. <clears throat> if we lie often, uh, then it is possible, it is probable uh, that uh, people will also lie uh, to us uh, in the future. Uh. And then the fifth precept, not to take intoxicants uh, to the extent of being intoxicated. Uh, uh, if we uh, constantly take intoxicants, uh, then the Buddha said, it is very likely uh, that when you come back uh, as a human being, uh, there is something wrong with your brain. Uh, uh. So, uh, one thing... Uh, we must uh, understand in our Buddhist uh, sila, uh, our Buddhist precepts uh, are not like Christian commandments. Uh. Christian commandments, uh, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, etc. They are commandments. Uh. You cannot break them at all. But in Buddhism, uh, the Buddha said uh, that we, when we recite our precepts, uh, we recite Panati Pata Veramani Sika Padang Samadhyami. It means uh, I undertake to train myself to abstain from killing. So you only undertake uh, to train yourself. You don't promise uh, that you will not break the precepts. Uh. So when you say you undertake to train yourself, that means you try uh, your best uh, to uphold the precept. And sometimes, when, as a beginner, uh, it is not possible uh, to be uh, very strict with the precepts. Uh. For example, a lot of uh, new Buddhists, uh, they, they, they always ask, you know, oh, yeah, I can't keep this precept. Sometimes this mosquito comes and bite me. Uh, I like to well up. <laughs> it's very natural. Uh. And then, as we progress, uh, as we understand more Dhamma, then we can keep the precepts better. Uh. Uh, so actually, these precepts, uh, it is quite impossible uh, to keep them 100%. For example, if your house is invaded by white ants, uh, if you don't call the, the, the rent-to-kill company, uh, then your house may come down. <laughs> so you have to sometimes uh, uh, do some killing. Uh, but uh, the Buddha said, what is not necessary, uh, uh, don't harm other living beings uh, if it is not necessary. Uh. Sometimes, like you have your own child, uh, your own children. Uh, sometimes they are naughty, uh, so you have to wallop them, yes or not, for their own good. Uh, so, uh, we have to use our wisdom. Uh. Now, this killing precept, uh, it is not necessary uh, that uh, we must be vegetarians. Uh. Uh, the Buddha was a very practical person, uh, and he said uh, that 
uh, what is important is that we don't directly cause the killing of living beings. Lah. So the Buddha allowed uh, that uh, if you buy meat in the market, uh, an animal that is already killed, uh, or fish that is dead, uh, so you don't directly contribute to its killing, uh, then it's all right. Uh, because uh, even if every human being uh, became a vegetarian on, in this uh, world, uh, there will still be killing. Uh, killing is something that cannot be avoided. We don't, uh, even if we don't eat uh, the meat of animals, uh, they will multiply so fast uh, that very soon uh, they will be running all over the highways uh, and uh, plus we'll have to engage people to kill them. <laughs> Even now, uh, the government has to uh, get these workers uh, to kill stray dogs, dogs without license, uh, because if they multiply too much, uh, then they will they become rabid, uh, and they bite people, uh, people will get sick. Uh. So, uh, what is important, the Buddha said, if we eat meat, uh, it must have three conditions. Uh, we do not see, we do not hear, and we do not suspect uh, that the animal was purposely killed for us. Uh. Uh. Those people who slaughter animals, uh, they are not actually directly killing uh, killing for us. Uh. They they slaughter uh, to sell the meat. Uh. What you do with the meat is is not their concern. Uh. Uh, uh, whether you take the meat and throw it away or you you you, you feed it to some animal and all that. Uh. All what they want is just money. So they are not actually uh, killing directly for you. Uh. Besides the five precepts, uh, the Buddha taught uh, that uh, lay people uh, should keep the eight precepts uh, once a week uh, because the Buddha said life is very uncertain. We don't know when we are going to pass away. Uh, just uh, about a month ago, uh, uh, this uh, former Kapiya of mine, Kapiya is a person who looks after the monk's uh, accounts uh, and who helps the monk uh, buy things and all that. Uh. He was 49 years old in Penang, uh, suddenly passed away because he had a weakness for good food. Whenever he came across good food, uh, he could not control himself. Uh, so he already had a warning about three, four years ago, he had a stroke. Uh, but because he was a very good, decent person, uh, uh, he had this uh, yen, uh, somebody who did reflexology on him, uh, and he recovered completely from his stroke. Uh, but after a few years, uh, he went back to his old habit of eating excessively. Uh, and suddenly, one day, he just died on the bed. So we don't know when we are going to pass away. So because of that, uh, the Buddha said uh, uh, that actually every one of us uh, actually has cancer. Our body is like a cancer. When, you, uh, you, when the doctor pronounces that you have cancer, uh, what does he say? He may say uh, you have at the most, uh, say, you are expected uh, to have uh, at the most, uh, say, two years more to live or five years more to live. Uh, but he cannot tell exactly when you will die. Yes or not? And he cannot be certain also that within five years you will die. Maybe you might continue to live on. Uh, uh. So, in the same way, the Buddha says uh, every one of us has got cancer because we don't know when we are going to die. We might die within one year, we might die within five years, within ten years. Uh, but definitely within uh, 30, 30 years or so, uh, definitely uh, most of us uh, will be dead. Uh, so, because we don't know when we, we are going to die and, <coughs> and we might die suddenly, uh, so the Buddha said, uh, even lay people, uh, you have to think of cultivating yourself at least once a week. Uh, once a week, you should keep the eight precepts. Uh, and 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 uh, what are the eight precepts? Basically, it's the five precepts plus the sixth precept is not to eat uh, normal food uh, between noon uh, and the next morning. Uh, not to eat uh, normal food, uh, rice and all that. <clears throat> but if you are hungry at night, uh, you can make a drink. Uh. So that is uh, the sixth precept. The seventh precept basically has two precepts. Uh. One is not to uh, see shows, uh, listen to music, see television, sing songs and all that. And the other part of it is not to adorn your body, la, put up, put makeup or perfume, uh, etc. Uh. And then the eighth precept 
is uh, not to sleep on uh, high and wide beds, lah, luxurious beds. Lah. Uh. So when you practice these eight precepts, uh, you are trying to be like a monk or a nun uh, for one day and one night. Uh. Uh, so, because you have this uh, urge to to renounce, uh, the merit uh, is very great. Uh. And the Buddha said uh, in the in the suttas that if lay people keep the eight precepts constantly, uh, the chances of being reborn in heaven are very great. Uh. And when you are reborn in heaven, uh, you enjoy life uh, in terms of millions of years. Uh. Uh, so it is worth the the, the trouble uh, to at least once a week. Uh, Keep the eight precepts. Lah. If you can't keep it in the Buddhist society or in the monastery, eh, at least try to keep it at home. Lah. Ah. Now, what are the disadvantages of not practicing sila? <clears throat> the first one, if a person does not uh, keep the sila, is he, he will squander away whatever wealth he has lah, through drinking, womanizing, nightlife, gambling, etc. Lah. Uh, that's the first disadvantage of not keeping sila. The second one is he will have a bad reputation because people will say this person is a drunkard or is a gambler or is a womanizer, etc. Third one is he will not be confident before a crowd of people, people who don't uh, have moral conduct. Uh, they, they, they dare not face uh, people uh, because they are ashamed uh, they have done something wrong. Number four, if you don't keep uh, sila, then uh, you can have remorse uh, later. Uh, remorse uh, will trouble you, uh, make you restless. Uh. And then there are some people, uh, before they become very old, uh, they become senile. Uh, partly because of that. Because if you don't have good sila, uh, the mind is troubled. Uh. There are some people in their fifties, uh, they will become senile already. Uh. Whereas uh, there are some I, I have an old supporter in Penang, uh, uh, 80 plus years old. Uh, uh, Sila is very good and her memory is very good. Uh, she can remember telephone numbers and all that. Then the fifth disadvantage of not keeping Sila is that when we die, uh, we become frightened, uh, very frightened. Uh, because we know we are going to have a bad rebirth. Uh. Uh, there are some people when they die, uh, they even shout uh, in terror. Then the sixth uh, uh, disadvantage uh, of not keeping sila is that you'll have a bad rebirth, uh, rebirth in a woeful plane. So that's about sila. Now dana. Now we talk about dana. Dana is charity. Uh, charity normally when we talk about charity, that means um, giving material things uh, like giving money and all that. Uh. But besides that, uh, you can also uh, give, donate uh, your energy or your time, etc. Uh, as, and even comforting words, uh, especially uh, if some some uh, friend uh, or some acquaintance uh, is sick uh, with cancer or with some some bad, uh, very serious uh, ailment, uh, then it is uh, very good uh, if you can go and see that person uh, and give him or her some comforting words. Uh, uh, this is uh, especially true uh, in needed uh, if that person is terminally ill. And a lot of um, Chinese, uh, we Chinese have a bad reputation of uh, pantang. Uh, somebody is very sick, uh, they don't like to go, they think, oh, might uh, get some bad luck, uh, might get sick or something. But if we understand the Dhamma, then we should not be afraid. Uh, uh, what is important is if we perform good karma. When we perform good karma, we have a lot of blessings. Uh, and when we have a lot of blessings, uh, then our, how do you say, one, what, one pak. Oh, uh, ji un kwan. Uh, so, uh, then we are not afraid. Uh, uh. Now, as far as making uh, offerings or charity, uh, there are four things uh, called the four requisites uh, that every person uh, uh, needs. Uh. The first one is food. The second one is clothing. Uh, for a monk will be ropes. Uh. The third one is medicinal care. The fourth one is uh, place to sleep, uh, place to stay. Uh. Uh. And these are the basic necessities of every person. Uh. 
So uh, when we do uh, charity, uh, these are the basic things uh, that we have to give, uh, we have to do. Uh.